Hi, welcome to this month's Macworld video podcast. I'm your host, Macworld Senior Editor Chris Breen. For this episode, we reach back into the Breen's Bungalow archives. This is an archive of videos that I prepare each month for Macworld's virtual CD. The subject of this month's bungalow is iTunes tips. Now, although this was prepared last summer and therefore before the existence of iTunes 7, except for some changes in some menus and preferences, the tips still apply to the latest version of iTunes. I hope you find it helpful. Hi, welcome to this month's Breen's Bungalow. I'm your host, Chris Breen. While the sun is shining, the birds are chirping, and frankly, those birds are making too much noise. And because they are, I use every Mac user's favorite noisemakers, the iPod and iTunes, to drown them out. The thing is that iTunes is far more than just a noisemaker, a way to play your audio CDs or load your iPod. If you scratch the service, there are lots of features under there. I'd like to devote the next few minutes to looking at some of the better and lesser known capabilities of iTunes. Let's start with iTunes as an audio converter. Just as the Mac can display graphics files saved in a variety of formats, JPEG, PICT, and TIFF for example, it can also play a variety of audio formats. These include AIFF, WAVE, AAC, MP3, and Apple Lossless. The brief rundown on each is that AIFF and WAV files are uncompressed, meaning that they sound great, but they take up a lot of room, about 10 megabytes of storage for a minute of stereo audio. AAC and MP3 are lossy compression formats, meaning they're made smaller by ripping out audio information that you supposedly can't hear, but your dog can. By default, iTunes rips MP3 files at about 10% the size of the original file, and AAC rips to about 7% the size of the original. You can save space on your iPod by using one of these file types. Apple Lossless is, as its name implies, a lossless compression format that maintains the original quality of the uncompressed file, but manages to make it smaller, about 55% of the original size, by removing redundant data and using other trickery. iTunes allows you to convert one file format to another, something you might want to do to keep uncompressed versions of your music tracks on your computer and compressed versions on your iPod. To do so, follow these steps. Open iTunes Preferences, click the Advanced Preference, click the Importing tab, and choose the encoder you want from the Import Using pop-up menu. From the Settings pop-up menu, you can choose one of the default settings or select Custom, and then adjust the bit rate, sample rate, and channels. And what do these mean? The higher the bitrate, the better quality the audio, but the larger the file. Basically, the bitrate number tells you how much information is flowing through the pipe. Sample rate is the number of times the audio is sampled to create its digital representation. So, the higher the sample rate, the more realistic the sound. 44.1 kHz is CD quality. You can adjust it up to 48K, but honestly, you may not be able to tell the difference in sound quality, and that makes for a larger file. Channels is for creating stereo or mono files. You might want to choose mono if you're converting old recordings or podcasts that were originally recorded in mono. Doing so will cut the file size in half. Once you've chosen a new setting, select the files you want to convert and, from the Advanced menu, choose Convert Selection to whatever encoder you've chosen. After converting your files, you can file them away by creating a smart playlist that looks for a certain file type. Here's an example. iTunes can also give you a hint about how your Mac's performance compares to the next guys. It's like this. Start playing back a track and choose Turn Visualizer On from the Visualizer menu. Flip it into full screen by pressing Command F. While the Visualizer plays, press the T key to turn off the Visualizer cap. This is kind of a speed governor that keeps the Visualizer effect from eating up all your processor's power. Now press F. This displays the frame rate of the visualizer. The numbers that play across the top left corner of your screen tell you how many frames per second the visualizer is playing. You can take this number and see how it compares to another Mac you come across to see just how much graphics power your Mac has to offer. Since version 4.9 of the program, iTunes can play video. Oh sure, you can do the same thing in QuickTime Player, but iTunes offers a couple of specific advantages. The first is that you can keep all your videos in one convenient location. Drag a video into iTunes, 
and it shows up in iTunes' main window when you click the Videos entry in the iTunes source list. Secondly, within iTunes you can play videos at full screen. QuickTime Player allows you to do this only if you buy the QuickTime Pro version for $29. And, if you're using an Intel Mac, you can use Front Row to stream videos from one Mac to another. Note that in order to do this, you need a fast network, a very solid airport connection, or a fast wired Ethernet connection. And iTunes offers ways other than the iPod or audio CDs to back up your music and take it with you. Those ways are found within the burning area of the Advanced tab within iTunes Preferences. Here you'll see the Audio CD option enabled as the default disk format, but there are two other options worth looking at. If you choose MP3 CD, iTunes will burn your tracks to disk as, well, an MP3 CD. These are much smaller than the kinds of files stored on an audio CD. You can fit nearly 11 hours worth of music on an MP3 CD. Of course, in order to do this, you must have a player that's compatible with MP3 CDs. If you do, it's a great way to pack a ton of music onto a single disc. The MP3 CD is not a great option for backing up your music, however, as it converts your files to a compressed format, possibly losing some of the audio along the way. For backup, choose the Data CD or DVD option. This burns your files to a writable CD or DVD disc in their native state, as data files rather than audio files. These discs can't be played in any player. This option is offered strictly as a way to back up your music files, something you should do when you purchase music from the iTunes Music Store. And that goes for videos, too. And finally, iTunes is a great way to play music throughout your house. The latest version of iTunes support wirelessly streaming music to up to three Airport Express base stations. Just plug each Airport Express into a wall socket, string an audio cable between them and an amplifier or amplified speakers, and run the Airport Setup Assistant to bring each Airport Express into your wireless network. Once that's done, go to the Advanced tab of iTunes Preferences, click the General tab, and be sure the Look for Remote Speakers Connected with AirTunes option is checked, and click OK. Any available Airport Express unit should appear at the bottom of the iTunes window in a pop-up menu. To play all units simultaneously, select multiple speakers from this menu. In the window that appears, choose the base stations you want the music to stream to. And there you have it, today's iTunes tips for making a more harmonious Mac. I hope you found this helpful. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you next month.